Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei Medienklagemauer TV aus unserem Studio Karlsruhe. Existiert die Kanzlerakte? Man mag das Papier nennen, wie man will, ob man es nun Kanzlerakte, Unterwerfungsbrief oder auch geheimer Staatsvertrag nennt, spielt keine Rolle. Wer die Existenz eines solchen Papiers leugnet, muss gleichzeitig Persönlichkeiten wie Egon Bahr und Gerd Helmut Komossa als Lügner bezeichnen. Der ehemalige Chef des militärischen Abschirmdienstes MAD, Gerd Helmut Komossa, berichtete in seinem Buch »Die deutsche Karte« sowohl über die Medienhoheit der Alliierten bis zum Jahr 2099 als auch über die Kanzlerakte, die jeder Bundeskanzler vor Ablegung des Amtseides zu unterschreiben hatte. Dies, um die Vorbehaltsrechte der Alliierten zu bestätigen. Gleiches berichtet der ehemalige Staatssekretär im Bundeskanzleramt Egon Bahr über Willy Brandt, der sich zunächst weigerte, den Unterwerfungsbrief zu unterzeichnen, um es letztendlich dann doch zu tun. Genau wie seine Vorgänger Adenauer, Erhard und Kiesinger. Wie bekannt sein dürfte, existieren die alliierten Vorbehaltsrechte bis heute. Warum also sollte dieser Unterwerfungsbrief, wie ihn Egon Bahr nannte, nicht mehr existieren? Das Verhalten der politischen Akteure beweist eher das Gegenteil, nämlich die Existenz eines solchen Dokumentes. Der Chef der Linken, Gregor Gysi, spricht hier folgerichtig vom Duckmäusertum der Merkel-Regierung gegenüber den Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika. Recht hat er. Der Journalist, politischer Aktivist und Autor zahlreicher Bücher über die Außenpolitik, Jürgen Elsässer, konstatierte über die Souveränität Deutschlands wie folgt. Selbst etwa 70 Jahre nach Kriegsende befinden sich immer noch über 50.000 US-Soldaten, hunderte Panzer und zahlreiche US-Stützpunkte einschließlich Atomwaffen auf deutschem Boden. Und die Bevölkerung trägt weiter fleißig die Besatzungskosten in Milliardenhöhe. Damit finanzieren deutsche Bürger auch die menschenfeindlichen Drohnenkriege der US-Regierung, welche faktisch gesehen Hinrichtung ohne gerichtliche Urteile von Richtern darstellen. Todesstrafe ohne Gerichtsverfahren und das von deutschem Boden aus. The former head of the West German military intelligence has revealed secret details of a 1949 US German treaty. In his book The German Card, Gerd Helmut Komossa accuses America and its allies of deliberately suppressing the nation's sovereignty. Artisa Katharina Grotrova reports from Berlin. Looking around Berlin these days, you wonder if there is anywhere else with so much freedom of expression. Twenty years after the war fell and the most painful wounds have healed, there seems to be no more uncomfortable truths left for Germans. Yet some still manage to come up with hot potatoes, the biggest from the former head of the intelligence service in West Germany. In Gerd Helmut Kamosser's book, The German Court, he claims Germany has until now been controlled by the United States and its allies and was even viewed as a possible target. At a NATO meeting, I realized that a possible plan was for the Alliance to hit the largest dam in West Germany with a nuclear bomb. If strikes had taken place, a great number of civilians would have died. The retired general details a secret pact he alleges was signed in 1949 between Germany and the U.S. and will be in force for another 90 years. Kamosa says this secret agreement means that all political parties in Germany are supervised by a special Washington-based body, that the country's army takes part in all NATO missions at first demand, and that all German gold reserves are stored in New York. For some, though, the content of the book is nothing new. Remember the proposal of Prime Minister Putin to Germany to share with Russia uh, the natural gas trading throughout the Europe. It was done a couple of years ago and German uh, leadership answered this exactly the same way as uh, German leadership answered the Soviet note of 1952. Silence. But what is the reason for Germany not to participate in such a lucrative business as a natural gas trading throughout the Europe through German network? Of course, somebody had to advise them not to rush immediately. Surprisingly, it was a small publisher from Austria, not Germany, who first became interested in the script. My personal opinion, uh, it was obviously clear that the Democratic Republic of Germany was not a sovereign country, that it was really under the rule of Soviet Union. And if it 
comes out that also the Federal Republic of Germany was not a really sovereign country, I think it can change also the discussion about uh, the history a bit. Reviews by the first readers quickly turned into heated debates on German television. The author was bombarded with criticism for doubting democratic principles brought to the country by the West. As a result, Kamusa refused to give any more interviews and has even apologized for some uncomfortable chapters in the book. It's not every day that a chief of intelligence discloses secrets about a political regime. With some good promotion, this book could become a bestseller. But in Germany, its distribution is up against some difficulties. The country's biggest bookshop, Dusman, which is also a cultural foundation, has refused to sell the book at all. The contents of the book, though, will soon be available to millions more readers. The German card has recently been translated into Russian. The publisher expects strong sales and believes the most heated debates are yet to come. Ekaterina Grachova, RT, 